Well, good morning. morning. Welcome to the NTSB's roundtable on preventing in-flight loss of control in general aviation through training and technology. I am Robert Sumwalt, and I'm the chairman of the NTSB, and I'll be moderating this roundtable. Joining me today, Mike Folkerts, who has been leading this effort from the NTSB, Tim LeBaron, who is the Deputy Director of the NTSB's Office of Aviation Safety. My colleague on the board, Honorable Earl Weiner. Behind me is John DeLisi, who is the Director of the NTSB's Office of Aviation Safety. And we've got a number of NTSB folks over here. We will be uh, going around the table and momentarily and in introducing uh, ourselves. But uh, we want to thank all of you for coming and thank everyone who is watching either uh, live in the boardroom or remotely via webcast. Before we begin, let me be clear about who and what will be the focus of this today's roundtable. We're focusing on in-flight loss of control with fixed-wing aircraft with pilots who are flying VFR. We're not talking about helicopters. That's a completely different set of topics, set of issues. A very special thanks to our panelists uh, today for taking the time to be with us today. We've got some of the best and brightest in aviation and a real cross-section of folks. We've got an aerobatics uh, champion and general aviation instructor, a NASA astronaut, four-time astronaut, and uh, or one-time astronaut, four times in space, and you're the chief astronaut for NASA. We've got reps from the EAA, Gamma, AOPA, Four Flight, Embry Riddle, SAFE, the FAA, among others. And we'll go around the room in just a minute, but I uh, just wanted those in the audience to get an idea of some of the firepower that we have in here today. As I think we all know, loss of control in flight kills more general aviation pilots and passengers than any other factor. And that's why loss of control in flight and general aviation is on the NTSB's most wanted list, and that's why we are here today. Uh, today, again, we'll focus on VFR pilots, and we'll discuss how training and technology can improve situational awareness. And frankly, I'd like for the discussion, uh, we've designed this so that it's a very conversational uh, discussion. We want it to be collaborative. We've deliberately said that with, uh, with, with, with really one exception, no PowerPoints. Now, there might be an occasional slide that somebody wants to put up there, but uh, originally the plan was that people would do presentations, and I said, no, let's not do that. Let's have across-the-table discussion. So let's just have uh, good discussions. Uh, before we go around the room with introductions, uh, let's do the safety briefing and some, some housekeeping. Um, of course, as Mike said, uh, please silence these things right here. Uh, there, there are a few exits uh, from the room. Uh, exit here and exit here, and then the one through which we entered. Now, I always say this because it depends probably on the nature of the exit, nature of the emergency, but these exits right here, uh, they will take you further into the building. Yes, there's a hallway back there and there's a maze. This one will take you outside quickly. Depending on the emergency, you might want to just keep that in mind. These are officially exits, but you won't be outside as soon as you pop through those doors. Uh, we have a, uh, an AED out there if we need it. We've got telephones. We can call 911 from our telephones, our cell phones, or there are three phones on the hall back there uh, on the wall where you dial 9 first to get an outside line and then 911. Uh, one last announcement concerning WINGS credit. Yes, you can get WINGS credit for attending this, for watching the morning session. And uh, at the end of the morning session, right before lunch, we will provide you with the secret code that you can email and so you can get WINGS credit. And the address that you will be using, uh, send it from your WINGS, Wings email account, whatever email account is associated with your WINGS, um, with your FAA, FAA WINGS um, situation, send it to LOC Roundtable at NTSB.gov. So 
the email address locroundtable at ntsb.gov and using the email address associated with your WINGS account. And we will repeat these directions right before lunch. So right before lunch, we'll reserve about 10 or 12 minutes for questions. If you're uh, here in the live audience, you can write your, write your questions on the index cards that have been provided when you came into the room. Or if you are, would like to email your questions, you can certainly do that. And again, the email address is locroundtable at ntsb.gov. So enough uh, talking from, from me. Why don't we start right here with Paul and go around the room. Good morning, Paul Darris, AOPA Air Safety Institute. Good morning, Brad Palmer, manager of the General Aviation Commercial Division at the FAA. Good morning, Carolina Anderson, Associate Professor of Aeronautical Science at embry Riddle in Daytona. Good morning, Doug Stewart, Executive Director Emeritus of SAFE. Good morning, Stasi Poulos, President of Meister Aviation Simulation Technology. Good morning, Andrew Walton, Director of Safety at Liberty University School of Aeronautics. Good morning, Corey Stevens with the FAA's Office of Accident Investigation and Prevention. Good morning, I'm Patty Wagstaff with uh, Patty Wagstaff Aviation Safety. Good morning, Charlie Prequart with Orbital ATK. I run the propulsion division there, but for these purposes, I'm also associated with the EAA as the vice chair of the board and chair of their safety committee. Malcolm Toon from Forfalite. I run the mapping, navigation, and military uh, development teams. Good morning, Dave Cizo, FAA, Small Airplane Standard Staff. Good morning, Sean Elliott, Vice President with the Experimental Aircraft Association. Great to be here. Good morning, Jens Enig with the General Aviation Manufacturers Association. Good morning, Mel Johnson. I'm with the uh, Aircraft Certification Ser Services Policy and Innovation Division. And Justin Barkowski with the uh, Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, Director of Regulatory Affairs. And Earl Weiner, board member NTSB. Tim, Tim LeBaron, uh, NTSB, uh, Deputy Director for Regional Operations. Mike Folkerts, Central Region Air Safety Investigator. Robert Sumwalt, and we'll go over to the table here. I'd also like to uh, point out our managing director, the NTSB, Dennis Jones, who is a 39-year veteran of the NTSB. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, this morning, we will start with John DeLisi, uh, who is the director of the NTSB's o Office of Aviation Safety. And John will outline the issue of loss of control by discussing accidents and data. And after John, we'll get into the first uh, panel topic, which will be um, uh, pilot training and education. Uh, so I've often said that professionalism has nothing to do with the size of the paycheck or the size of the equipment that you're flying. And uh, you don't have to be a pro to fly like a pro. Professionals continually seek to improve knowledge and, and, and hone, hone their skills. And so we'll start off, uh, start off after John, uh, we'll start off with insights on professionalism from aerobatics champion Patty Wagstaff and also from NASA Shuttle Commander Charlie Precourt. Uh, Patty will then walk through the common errors that she sees as a flight instructor and we'll talk about uh, AOPA's focused flight review efforts and dive into a range of simulator training options for general aviation pilots. We'll talk about mentoring, and uh, oftentimes mentoring is not, uh, not that strong in general aviation. It can be, but there's not a formalized uh, process for that. So we'll, uh, Doug Stewart, who's the founding member of SAFE, uh, will discuss options for flight instructors to mentor pilots remotely. So that ought to be fascinating. And this morning we'll also discuss how newer technologies 
are being incorporated into flight training programs. Uh, things like flight data monitoring and information sharing. Wherever Corey is, there you are, and uh, we'll talk about that. And recent FAA guidance on the airman certification standards. Uh, after lunch, we'll focus on cockpit technologies that can, can improve situational awareness, and we'll lead off right after lunch with the winners of the EAA Founders Innovation Prize, uh, a fascinating idea developed by two high school students. And uh, they're right there on the front, front row. So uh, uh, that will really be a fascinating discussion. Um, it also get, gives me great, uh, great hope for the future generations because these guys have it together. Uh, we'll, we'll then get into the perspectives of a variety of energy management systems, followed by an overview of aviation industry efforts to mitigate loss of control, and we will discuss the latest innovations for hope for the future. And our final topic of the day, the potential challenges to implementing all of the great ideas that we've heard about throughout the day, including regulatory barriers to implementation, as well as identifying the next steps. The goal of today is to be able to walk away from this roundtable with some clear actions for pilots, manufacturers, associations, government agencies to address these challenging issues. Because loss of control in flight is claiming entirely too many lives.